Hi, Adam Bazaljet here from Scratch Golf Academy. Today's subject, one simple drill that could be a game changer. I think you're going to like this one. It's really more of an image than a drill, but I think it's very empowering to the golf. We'll look at three conditions you have to have at impact and how this drill will help you not only apply them, but apply them to different requirements for different clubs. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. We'd love to get you free content. Also hit the bell there. Be notified every time a new video is coming your way. We have a great app, free app, Scratch Golf Academy. Type it in at the App Store. Lots of training tools for you. And a link to a free three-part course on Solid Strike Formula below. Check it out at the end of the video. Okay, there's three things that impact you really have to do that we're going to touch on here. One is you have to have the handle forward. If you're going to apply pressure to the ball, it has to be forward more or less in line with that lead arm. Secondly, your weight has to be forward. And thirdly, it's not really impact, but the club has to come a little bit more shallow. Now I'm going to show you pros doing this very briefly, but also show you the subtle variables between say driving and irons, how you have to be able to create a little bit different angle of attack if you're going to be a good player. Adam Scott on the left, Davis Love on the right, hard to beat that. There's Adam at impact, and let's take Davis Love through impact. And the things you'll notice with both of these great strikers of the ball, the handle is forward, that's number one. Let's say it's in line with that front arm. It doesn't have to be precisely so, but near enough. The next thing you might notice, well, the weight's clearly on the target leg. It's clearly gone forward. And then the third thing we might see, let's go to the down the line angle. This one will be good. And this isn't so much an impact position, but approaching impact, even though he's hitting a little bit down on the ball, doing a great job of it there, the club's still coming from the inside. In other words, it's a shallow angle of attack from what I would call the side of his body onto the ball. Now, let's have a look at Davis, say, Bridgestone commercial there, hitting a driver. And let's have a look at the subtle differences in the iron. In both cases, let's get him right near impact. Let's back up just a bit, say, there. Okay, in both cases, as we've said, left arm, lead arm, and club more or less form a straight line. Certainly his weight's towards the target foot more on the arm than it is the driver, but there's no question his weight's pushed into that foot. But you can see he is generating more of a sweeping slash upward hit with the driver than he is with the iron where he's hitting down a little bit more. Two large nails from the hardware store. The angles are a little bit exaggerated, but if you had to hammer one nail in this way, then walk over here and hammer the other nail that way, do you think it's possible you absolutely couldn't do it? You could only hit down on this one? Of course it isn't. You'd have an innate sense of what to do without thinking about anything technical. Okay, human beings are given an amazing ability they're designed with to use their brains and their body if I had a paper cup full of water on a table about there, I could tip it over, I could push it into the ground. We just tend not to tap into this skill when we're playing golf because the golf club eventually, ultimately is just an extension of your hands and arms. Super skilled tennis players can do things with the racket as easily as they could with their hands, etc. So let's get on it here. I've got an eight iron. If I had to tap the nail into the ground, I don't want to chop at it, but I just want to lean the shaft and my weight a little bit to push it in there. Let's try a little tiny shot. I could feel a nice little squeeze down on it, probably a little too much. That's okay. Trying to get a feel. Now I'm going to take a driver. I've got that teed up extra high. I'm going to picture a little 10 inch fence in front of me. Could I have my handle forward and still get that ball up into the air a little bit? Sure I could. Learn to develop some feel. Play around with it. At least add it into the technical things you're working on. Makes such a difference to you as a golfer. Let's have a look from here. Now relative to this path, got something I think is really helpful for you, important in just a moment. Relative to this swing path though, you don't want to get your downward hit by being over here and steep. Always feel like that club's coming from the side of your hip, side of your body, so that the downward hit you might need for an iron is more forward shaft lean, more forward weight movement. Okay, final thought. Really borrowed this from Mike Hebron, great, great teacher. Got to play around to get good at stuff. Don't always try for neutral. So let's say I had my eight on and I want to hit one. This time I'm going to top it by hitting a little too much up. About that. This time I'm going to punch it low with a little bit too much divot. It's just not that difficult to do if you'll just loosen up. Don't worry about the shots. And by going from too much to too little, 
by going trying to hit a soft driver off a high T super high, etc., etc., you will quickly find the intermediate, the spot you're looking for, the sweet spot for the club at hand.